Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary Sanch and for those of you who are new here, I am a graphic designer and illustrator living in Canada. I work at a museum as a graphic designer and in my spare time I love to paint. So I have a sketchbook here that's freshly finished. It's a moleskin art plus sketchbook um, filled to the brim with drawings and paintings and I'd love to show you around it. On the front here, I'll just talk about this quickly. Um, here's a sticker of a chickadee by Allison Edwards. Um, you can see her URL there is allisonedwardsartwork.com. Uh, she is an artist from the same college as me, uh, and I always love supporting people who went through the same program. And uh, these stickers here are by me. These ones were some promo stickers I had printed, and this one you can get on my Redbubble store. So let's get started here. Um, I've got a really fun sticker here uh, from an artist that I really like, and some extra stickers that are just from, I think they're from Ikea or something. Uh, so this sketchbook here, you can see I worked on it from February to July of this year. So. It's a fairly long time, but I think I spent a lot of it doing work in other books. Um, and also in May and June, I was moving and then settling in for moving, so I didn't have as much sketchbook time as I would like. This first page here I think turned out quite nicely. Um, I'm not primarily a figure artist. Um, I'm mostly a nature and animal artist. Uh, that's the majority of my client work, although I do some portraits as well. Um, but I think this one just turned out nice. It's clean, it's uh, it's simple, um, and I think it's quite pretty. On this page here I have just some goblin sketches. I was working in this sketchbook around the same time I was doing the goblin mural, so goblins showed up in a lot of my work. They're tons of fun to draw. And uh, I was thinking of making a book about goblins um, before I got my full-time job, but now I've got enough work that I'm very content, um, and maybe goblins are something I'll pursue more in the future instead. Um, here is a nice test page uh, with Cascade Green and Serpentine Genuine watercolors from Daniel Smith. You can see the separation of the pigments in Cascade Green really nicely here. Um, I did a wash and graded it out to really draw out that pigment separation, which is so beautiful. And just a generic dog head on one side. A couple of other dog creature sketches and some pen tests up here of some pens that I bought. Uh, I'm working on a novel in my spare time and these are some of the creatures that appear in the novel. Um, they're sort of my version of a werewolf, I guess. Uh, I really like, do you guys know the werewolf design from the Harry Potter movies? Um, which one is it? Prisoner of Azkaban, where Lupin turns into a werewolf? That's a great design. I, I remember when I first saw it, I was like disappointed that it wasn't some hunky werewolf, like, <laughs> wasn't like something beefy and furry, but you know, the more that I learned about creature design, the more appreciation I had for, for Lupin's transformation design in the movie. Um, that's a really good one, the uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. I also like, uh, hmm. Goblet of Fire, that's the one. Although I was disappointed that they didn't put the Sphinx in it. Isn't there a Sphinx in the book? I only listen to the audiobooks. I'm I'm like a casual Harry Potter fan. <laughs> but I do like fantasy stuff. Uh, here's a watercolor sketch of a dryad or forest spirit. Here are some sketches of bulls that I did. I was doing a rodeo um, piece for a client, so just doing some anatomy sketches and gesture studies trying to figure out what I wanted to do for that painting. Here are some life drawings of meerkats from the Calgary Zoo. Uh, I drew them in pen. I think this is with the zebra, one of the zebra brush pens. I can't remember the exact name. Fude maybe? Um, it's a really nice pen and then I lost it and then I haven't been able to find any more to buy because we don't have a Kinokuniya near me. Um, <laughs> So if you want to send me brush pens, let me know. 
these are some meerkats and then I drew them from life while I was observing them in real time uh, and then later I went home and just put a quick wash on them to make the page more interesting and this over here is a rock hyrax they're kind of interesting creatures they're actually more closely related to elephants um, than most other animals they're in a group called Afrotheria the hyrax uh, so it's not a rodent it's got weird little hoof-looking feet, but it's not an ungulate either. Very strange animal, very cute, and they always look really grumpy at the zoo. Here's a brush pen drawing of some hippos, and this one turned out really good. I didn't even want to touch it with the watercolor. I just think it's so nice. Um, these are a couple cartoon sheep and a cartoon chicken, because uh, in the front of the book, I said the reward is two sheep and a hen. Um, <laughs> just kind of a dumb joke. A couple of dog sketches. These are just ballpoint pen. I think I was doodling these at a pub or something. These are a couple drawings of my aunt's dog. He's a Belgian Malinois uh, and his name is Rufus and he loves to tuck his paw under like this. Every time I visit him that's sort of how he sleeps so I just always draw him in the same position. Here are some generic dinosaur sketches from earlier in the year. I just drew these on printer paper and then taped them in with some washi tape. A couple more ballpoint pen sketches. This was sort of based off of the, the golden record in the Voyager satellites. Is it Voyager? I think it's Voyager. Oh yeah, and this is, um, this is Carl Sagan if he was a goblin. Uh, <laughs> it's a very specific joke. His name is Gob Sagan. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun to draw. Here I was just drawing out some watercolor lettering and I liked how this one turned out so I stuck it in there. Uh, here's a drawing of a magpie skull that I didn't get to finish but sort of nice in its own way. And uh, a Homo neanderthalensis. Uh, sketch here. This is with a little pen um, that I took to the museum one time and uh, so this is March 22nd. So basically this is before I got the job at the museum. Uh, this was one day that I went and I was just drawing and um, said hello to a few people and sort of winked at them that I had applied for the job, <laughs> but I was going as a visitor this day. And I think these sketches turned out really nice. Um, it's a paleontology museum, so a lot of it is dinosaurs, um, but they have a large collection of mammal specimens as well. So this day I limited myself to mammals only, um, just to focus the pages and make a nicer spread um, and just help me choose between the specimens because they are so many. Here's just a really quick dragon pencil drawing, another dragon pencil drawing, and a pencil drawing with some watercolor. Um, this is a character of mine, but I sort of, I always base his features off of a model and photographer named Cameron Gentry, um, who has a really wonderful face, so if he looks familiar, you might have seen him around on um, fashion campaigns or I think he's on Instagram too. A couple of gesture sketches and a nug from Dragon Age and this is a piece by Jonathan Kuo. Uh, it is for the Feast of the Mesozoic toy series. Well, not toys, action figures. Um, scale models. Uh, they are really, really beautiful and I got the Dromaeosaurus because the Dromaeosaurus is local. Um, they find it in bone beds near to where I live, so always got a root for the home team, right? Um, this is just from a magazine. I think it's covering up a drawing that I didn't like. <laughs> and uh, a couple of possum sketches. This is an Australian possum of some sort and North American possums. Marsupials are super, super weird. I wish I knew more about them and had more experience with them, but their faces are, are absolutely adorable. Um, here is a day that I went back to the museum. This is April. No, okay, so the March one, that was before I applied. This is probably closer to when I applied. 
it's been a blur. This year has been a total blur. Um, here's a Pachyrhinoceratops, or oh, I just mished them together. Triceratops, Pachyrhinosaurus. I promise I work at a paleontology museum. <laughs> Here are just some other little pen sketches. This is a an anole. I think that's one of the anoles at the museum. And uh, some mammal sketches here. Um, one artist that I know was lucky enough to happen across a least weasel who was hit by a car, most likely, or killed by a cat. I can't remember which, um, but we used it for art reference. It was very sad. Um, I know some people are touchy on the subject of dead animals, but you can learn quite a lot. And I think what I learned is mostly that least weasel is adorable, which I think is an important fact. <laughs> uh, here are just a couple sketches. These are just with like crayons from from a restaurant or something and just with pens here. Some sketches and uh, watercolors in them. These are some notes from a piece I did for Canadian Geographic that's coming out in July sometime. I'm pretty sure, it could be August. They kind of come out and then it's like, oh, surprise, remember what you made for this? <laughs> Which is fun, I love doing client work like that. Um, with sort of a short turnaround, you make something good, and then you get a present, which is your piece in print. <laughs> this is a little sketch uh, based on Ezra Miller. These were some color studies for the piece for Kangio. Um, I used to do color studies like this in art school quite a lot, and my teachers would be like, ah, oh, like that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you have to apply the colors to the piece that you're making. But I don't know, they're mostly for me and not really for showing anybody else. Like I don't show these to, to a client. It's just for me to organize my own brain. So whatever works, don't let people tell you rectangles are pointless because I sure paint a lot of them. <laughs> Here's a couple sketches here. This is a character from my novel. Um, his name is Damien, and he's sort of a hobbyist linguist. Um, <laughs> he's the main character, believe it or not. He goes through quite a lot of uh, emotional changes throughout the book, and I like to tie them into environmental changes. So it's sort of a book about landscapes and getting obsessed. Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> I figure when I finish the draft, I'll be able to actually write out a nice summary of the book. Until then, I don't know, it's got mountains and stuff. <laughs> this is just a, another sketch. This is based off Jay Davidson um, in the Stargate movie from the 90s, which I love. Uh, yep, this is a really old lino cut print that I did um, that I just found while I was cleaning to move. Um, so I just stuck it in here because I didn't know where else to put it. Otherwise I probably would have recycled it. It's just, it's very old. So I just wrote something in the center. Um, I still have this lino cut somewhere. I just haven't printed it in ages. Here's another marsupial sketch just in pen. I really like the color of this pen. And some really loose watercolor bird studies. I just felt like rectangles again, I guess. Those dastardly rectangles. This is a trilobite painting I did in gouache for a previous video. And then this is just my um, Parks Canada Pass, which is expired. But I really like the design of this um, 150 sort of program that they did, uh, sweet. I guess sometimes they're called a sweet. Um, but I like the lime green with the, the subtle background. It's a really nice color combination. Here's a pepper from another video as well. This is watercolor and a willet done in pencil. These were some sketches for a logo project that I completed. Um, I just like stuck bunch of stuff in here just to keep it together like on this side is just um uh font tests typeface tests uh just to see what sort of typeface i wanted to go with i think i just ended up going with georgia which is a very standard 
um, professional looking serif typeface. A couple of uh, dino drawings and uh, plain air painting in gouache that I did in the Badlands. So at this point here, um, at this point we definitely have moved to from Heller now. So I like to make notes of big changes in my sketchbooks, like at the end of a sketchbook I'll write, for example, what term it was in art school that I finished that sketchbook. Um, just because I love knowing when things were done, um, it helps with my memory of my artistic progression and I figure it'll help in the future when that memory gets even foggier. <laughs> so it's sort of like an insurance for my future self to know what date it was. I recommend highly writing the date on everything you do because even if you hate it at the time, if you keep it, you'll want to know when it was done and it hurts your brain a lot less if you just write the date. <laughs> That's probably my number one tip for sketchbooks is write the date on it, write the date on the pages. Um, be kind of obsessive about it because it's important when things were made, you know. Uh, it's not sort of a, a closed timeline, it's a continuous timeline, so it's nice to see the points written down. And maybe I'm just obsessed with time because I work at a museum that's very concerned with deep time and uh, I don't know. <laughs> that was a little too philosophical. Here's a Gauff Ethereum that I drew and uh, I reconstructed it a little bit. They probably would not have had such a long trunk or maybe they would. I don't know, I'll have to ask an actual researcher. Um, but we have a skeleton of a Gauff Ethereum at the museum and uh, when I'm not feeling like drawing bones, I'll sketch out the bone and then draw the flesh on top. I just really like this drawing. I did it all from memory. Like, I didn't even Google an elephant, I don't think. So I feel like from that standpoint, I'm very proud of it for the recall that I had, that I was able to um, f feed into the drawing. Um, but of course, it's just a pencil sketch and uh, not with any input from actual scientists. So, I don't know, it's a nice sketch though. I love drawing whiskers on things. <laughs> Pretty much every mammal has whiskers and they're delightful to draw. Here is a set of line drawings um, with Posca marker backgrounds. I got a set of Posca markers, Posca paint markers, and they're interesting. Um, I find they kind of tear up the moleskin paper a little bit, but I got this set with really cute colors. Um, took forever to get here on Amazon. Uh, that's Canada for you. Um, but yeah, they're fun to add a pop of color to, to your drawings. Here are some that I drew trilobites with, with the orange and the sort of yellow orange. Um, I think these turned out pretty nice, but sometimes the markers I find are a bit spoogy, like they come out with too much paint. Um, but this guy's quite nice. Here are some ground squirrels. Um, where I live, there's tons of ground squirrels. There's so many, um, and they'll try to eat your food and stuff. <laughs> On this side is a couple of plain air paintings that are also on my channel as time lapses, so you should go check them out. And these were two pieces of paper that I just had like lying around and I wanted to use them up, so I just did some big washes with some watercolors and uh, Usually what I'll do, like, I like to do these big washes because then I can go scan them at a high resolution and then use them in my digital artwork um, or in my designs because if they need a texture or something then I have all of these textures that I've made myself so therefore I own them and can use them for whatever I want. Here are some bunny sketches. There's going to be a slightly bunny related or very bunny related video coming out on Thursday which is not a usual upload day for me but I hope that you will enjoy it very much. Um, so not gonna tell you too much about that, but there's gonna be bunnies. And here are just some more of those sort of uh, texture rectangles playing around. Sometimes your brain just doesn't wanna think about anything more strenuous than 
pushing paint around. So my sketchbooks end up with a lot of pages like these and I think they're really pretty. Um, so I don't mind just messing around, screwing around. Here is a dragon um, that I did with Prismacolor color erase pencils and a little bit of watercolor. Uh, this one I think turned out really pretty as well. I used a light brown pencil crayon for the very initial sketch so it gives it some sort of warmth coming through the background of it. Um, yeah, that's a nice page. I like how it spreads out across the whole spread. Just some sketches of rocks, um, just messing around, doodling. Usually while I watch YouTube, because I like to keep up with other creators, of course, being a YouTuber myself, um, it helps to know what other people are doing and it can be really inspiring, but it can also be a good way to pass these 33 degree Celsius days where I don't feel like doing anything. <laughs> And uh, here's a painting here. Here's a painting here that I think turned out really well. I think I really learned something from this painting. Um, I got some handmade watercolors from a manufacturer named Jasper Stardust on Etsy. And for the longest time, I was like, what am I gonna use these for? The consistency is very chalky, very strange. Um, and it sits on top of everything. So it doesn't really blend well. It doesn't mix well but it layers in such an interesting way. So I love the effect that it gives layered over top of this warm color. Um, and this is also based on a still of Jay Davidson from Stargate. He just has such a great face, um, really great face. And uh, yeah, that's, that's obviously why I just keep painting him. <laughs> Um, it's not even what he looks like now. This is what he looks like in the 90s, but you know <laughs> You like what you like I guess Here are just some color swatches with a muted um, Color wheel that I did just for fun um, to fill up this page Here are some sketches I did at the Calgary Zoo from life uh, and then I painted them with my primary um, Watercolor palette this one here so mixing a lot um, it forces you to think about what you're mixing, what colors go into your browns and all that. So there isn't actually a brown in here. So all of these are mixed from primaries, which is a fun exercise. So I bring this tin with me when I feel like it, basically, when I feel like I want a little extra brain workout. And the last spread here, I just felt like drawing some humans and I got a new pan of paint called Victoria Green from Stone Ground Watercolor Co. Um, it's this one right here. And it's a very transparent pale color. Uh, so I mixed in a few other colors for some of this, but I like it. It's like a wash of color without any chance of ever being overpowering. So I think it plays really nicely with the pencil in that regard. Um, I think this portrait especially turned out really nice. I like the looseness, I like the splatters, um, and then I finished it on July 1st, 2018. Happy Canada Day um, to the past. <laughs> um, and uh, as always in the back, I just keep tickets to movies I've seen as my sort of time capsule um, in my sketchbooks. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I sort of talked a lot, but um, I felt like talking to you guys, I guess. Uh, let me know if there's anything in here that you liked um, above the rest, if there's anything you enjoy the way I draw, if there's anything you think I should draw in the future, um, if there are any um, people or movie stars that you think have really great faces like Jay Davidson <laughs> Let me know. I'd love to know what you guys think what sort of people you draw all the time um, And what sort of paint colors you like, please tell me anything you guys are great Thank you for the support and I'll see you in the next video. Bye